Hi students, so today we're going to learn chapter 7 on marketing channels. This is going to be the second P yeah, in your marketing mix, which the first one on product we have covered in chapter 5 and chapter 6. So chapter 7 and chapter 8 will be about the second P, which is the place. Okay, so in this chapter 7, we're going to learn three things. The first one, to define the marketing channel. Secondly, to look into the channel intermediaries and their functions. And lastly, the consumer channel structure and level of consumer, sorry, level of channel distribution intensity. So as an introduction, you should know that a marketing channel or a channel of distribution okay, is a set of interdependent organizations. So this interdependent organization will facilitate the transfer of ownership as the products move from producer to business user or consumers. Channel members, also known as intermediaries, sometimes they are also called resellers and middlemen, which they would normally negotiate with one another, buy and sell the products, and facilitate the change of ownership between buyer and seller. So basically, all of these are what we call the set of interdependent organization, because each of them could be from different organization. And what they do is actually, they buy and sell, or they sometimes facilitate the change of ownership, okay, between one to another. Basically, it is from the uh, producer, okay, for the producer, from the manufacturer, to another business users or even from the producer to the consumers. So basically, uh, these all intermediaries can be seen in a supply chain, which is the connected chain of all the business entities that perform or support the marketing channel functions. So you can see from this diagram, you have the manufacturer, okay, that might sell the product to the retailer, okay, and also they will require this logistic, okay, like the aeroplane, the lorry, uh, the train, okay, to supply or to transport the product from one to another. And then they have the suppliers, especially to, su to supply the raw materials, okay, the distributors or retailers. So normally these are actually um, organization that sells to another business organization. Unlike retailers, retailers are typically selling products to the consumers. So the supply chain consists of upstream and also downstream partners. The upstream, okay, from the company is a set of firms that supply raw materials, components, part information, finances, and expertise needed to create a product or service. Um, you might know that these upstream are basically before the product is being made, yeah, which is whatever needed in a factory or whatever needed in a production. So that is what we call the upstream. So marketers are not really concerned about this, but marketers have traditionally focused on the downstream part of it or the downstream side of the supply chain, which is on the marketing channels or the distribution channels that look forward towards the customers. So Typically, the producer will hire channel members to perform the tasks and activities, which includes transportation or selling to the consumers, that the producer is not prepared to perform or that the intermediary is better prepared to perform these functions. So we will see here there are three types of channel intermediaries. Yeah? Number one, retailers. Secondly, merchant wholesalers. And the third one, agents and brokers. So um, the primary difference separating these intermediaries is whether they do take the title or not towards the product. When you talk about taking the title, meaning owning that product, particular product, uh, you own that product or not, okay? That is when you say you have uh, the title to the product or not. So retailers, which are the firms that sell mainly to consumers, okay? You must remember the word consumer means individual buyers, yeah? Or people who buy things for household consumptions. So uh, retailers, they do take title to the goods which they sell. Next, we have merchant wholesaler. So merchant wholesalers facilitate the movement of products and services from manufacturers okay, to the producers, resellers, government institutions, and also retailers. And merchant wholesaler, they do take title of the goods that they sell. 
um, the word merchant who seller like I told you just now there are organization that selling the products to other organizations yeah and the third one is the agents and brokers so agents and brokers facilitate the sale okay the sale of the product from producer to the end user by representing resellers or retailers sorry wholesalers or manufacturers and only agent and brokers do not take title to the products that they sell all right so now let's look at the channel functions performed by these intermediaries okay so it can be done by the merchant wholesaler can be done by the retailer or agent and also the brokers just now yeah so there are three functions that can be performed by them which the first one is transactional functions logistical functions second one and the third one is facilitating function the transactional functions includes contacting or promoting Contacting here, contacting the customers, yeah, and promoting it to the customers. Uh, secondly, to negotiate, okay, and also restaking. The second one, logistical function, there are three examples here, like physically distributing the products, storing the product, storing means keeping the product, yeah, sorting means you are putting it into some categories, like putting it into grades A, B, C, or sorting it in terms of the size and so on. And the third one is facilitating functions could include doing research and also financing kind of uh, functions that perform by the intermediaries. So um, here there are more explanation of each functions. Okay, so you can read through. I will not go through this by uh, taking a lot of times on this. If you have questions later on, then please ask me during our live session. Yeah. Okay, um, so these are some of the example of uh, channel intermediaries functions, yeah, uh, other than those that I've mentioned just now, there are eight other functions that can be done, including gathering and distributing information, engaging in the promotion just now, contacting prospective buyers, meaning you are trying to find out who could be your potential buyers, match offer to buyers needs, negotiate the transaction, Negotiate means you negotiate, yeah, you asking, they, they are trying to get uh, the best price and you're trying to give the best offer to them, okay. Uh, number six, physical distribution. This includes like you have a, a aeroplane, a mass cargo kind of thing, or a lorry, the container lorry, right. Uh, and then number seven, finance transactions along the channel members, which includes you are giving them some uh, financial uh help yeah or financial uh, credit terms for them to actually um, um continue with their business that means uh, for example you can just let the retailer get the product first and pay it to you later as you you are the merchant as wholesaler that trusts that particular retailer and number eight you try to assume the risk of the channel works now let's just look at the channel member stuff Okay, so basically there are three tasks that can be done by the channel members. First one, specialization and division of labor. Secondly, overcoming discrepancy. And the third one, providing contact efficiency. Can you please do a correction in your slides? It's not contract, yeah? it's actually contact efficiency. Okay, so let's first look at what is specialization and division of labor. This is when the channel members have the specialization and also the uh, human resources, yeah? when you talk about division of labor, this is people that are enable to perform the job better than the manufacturer itself. So it provides the efficiency and cost savings to the manufacturer and also to the other uh, wholesalers and also retailers or even the agent and brokers, okay? And then um, can attain the economies of scale. So economies of scale is actually when the producer are able to minimize their cost per unit, okay? And then it also helps in aiding the producer who has the lack of resources to market the product directly to the consumers and also build good relationship with the customers. Second is the overcoming discrepancies. This is a, actually a very uh, popular question in final exam. 
uh, since you don't have final exam, perhaps it might come out in your test, yeah? So uh, please get ready with your pen and paper or your slides there to write down the examples that I'm going to give to you. Now, first discrepancy. Now, what is discrepancy? So discrepancy is actually the differences, yeah? Or the gap that they have between the producer and also or the produ or producer or the manufacturer that have the gap between what they have and what the customer or the consumers wanted to have. So there are four discrepancies. Number one, discrepancy of quantity. This is the quantity, yeah, which is the difference between amount of product produced and the amount an end user wants to buy. So manufacturers, they normally uh, produce products in a very large quantity, yeah, in a factory especially. They can't afford to produce only one unit. Uh, so if that were to happen, everything will be very, very expensive. So um, they produce in large quantity, but consumers or the end users, they don't need that large quantity. The most they need perhaps, um, let's say, five or ten units at once. Okay. So what happens is that there is these channel members. So channel members will actually break down the uh, amount of what producer produce, which the wholesaler typically will buy in large quantity or we call it in bulk yeah b u l k bulk right so uh, the merchant wholesaler will later on break down the amount of that quantity into a smaller one that the retailers will normally buy from the merchant wholesaler so from there the retailers later on will later break further the quantity into smaller quantities that the end user will be able to purchase so that is why typically if you want to buy your products for example your instant noodle maggi mee okay so you want to buy maggi mee you go to the retailers shop and there is where you can actually buy a few packets all right but if you were to go to the factory of maggi for example they will not be able to sell to you one packet only okay you will need to buy wholesalers quantity they call it right so the second discrepancy is the discrepancy of assortment. This is the lack of all items a consumer's need to a consumer needs to receive full satisfaction from a product or the products that they buy. Um, when you talk about assortments, yeah, is the uh, varieties of products that you need to uh, use. Uh, sorry, you need to buy in order to make use of one product that you bought. For example, when you buy your um, uh, torch light okay torch light the manufacturer of torch light might just produce the torch light okay well in order for you to make use of the torch light perhaps you will need a battery so what you need is the battery and the torch light to make it useful uh, Mr. DIY, for example will actually bundle them together so when you go to that particular shop so Mr. Diawa here is a channel member, which is a retailer that actually sells torchlight and battery together so that you will be able to get the uh, full satisfaction when you buy the product. Understand? Third one, the temporal discrepancy. Temporal discrepancy means from the word temporary. Yeah? This is a situation that occurs when a product is produced, but consumers is not ready to buy it yet. Now, when you talk about this uh, production, yeah, uh, most factories, they will produce the products earlier. Okay, they will produce way early than when customer need it. A very good example is, uh, let's say, during Christmas. Typically, people will buy the trees, yeah, Christmas trees. Uh, in Malaysia, we always have the artificial trees, yeah. Unlike when you are in the United States or in the European countries, yes, they might have the real Christmas trees. But we are we are in Malaysia. Typically, we will just buy the artificial Christmas trees. So when does the factory start to produce the Christmas trees? It will not be producing it during uh, or uh, in December itself. So normally they will produce perhaps as early as in june or july okay so as they produce it it may take about one month okay and then there will be the um transportation of those particular uh trees okay which done by the channel members then 
it will be brought to the warehouse or to the shops and the shops will keep it in their store or in their warehouse until it is December where people start to look forward to buy that Christmas tree because if um, if you see Christmas tree now right this is like May will you buy the Christmas tree you will think like why are they selling Christmas trees now it's only May it's not even this uh, what they call it October yet okay what more to say December so you will not be ready to buy the Christmas trees yet so that's when the channel members will actually do that um, temporal discrepancies by keeping it first before the customer are ready to buy the product lastly the spatial discrepancy from the word space yeah location the spatial right that is the difference between location of a producer and the location of widely scattered markets this is when a producer might be at one location however the market could be at many other places but that particular producer may not be able to sell to each and every places where the customers are demanding for their product so what happened there is a channel member so channel members will actually break down so that's why you see that there are a lot of mr diy shops right now so mr diy acts as the channel member that perform this spatial discrepancy so customer don't have to go to the producers shop to buy the product but rather they can just get it at mr diy or um like uh, Watson and so Guardian as well they do this special discrepancy because producers may not be able to uh, sell their product from their shop at every state or every districts yeah so that's why the customer when they want to buy those products they can just get it from Guardian or from Watson so Watson and Guardian is another example of a channel member that do this special discrepancy lastly the channel member task which is to provide the contact efficiency now this is when products are available close to customers residence and quantity is available always in the right quantity and also at the right time so you can see the providing contact efficiency from this particular diagram now um, take example whereby you wanted to buy a tv okay so if there is no channel members it will be difficult for you to make comparison and go and find the tv okay so uh, let's say without the channel members or channel intermediary there are five producers times there are four consumers that each of them wanted to buy tv and the whole transaction will be 20 that means each customer will go to different producer to get information and to find out more about each and every brand okay but with an intermediary for example the circuit city or maybe we have thank you or we have the harvey norman here and uh, customer only need to go to one place okay and also the producers they might go to one place as well right and at this particular secret city each customers will be able to get information about all the manufacturers brand okay so with the intermediary five producer you have four customers and it only requires nine transactions so that means you don't have to have about up to 20 transactions so it provides this contact efficiency it simply means you are more convenient all right uh, whereby you don't have to go to many places but rather you just go to one place and get information about all of them in just one place so let's move on to 7.3 which is channel structure okay so the first part is you need to know what are the structures that are available number one the direct channel direct channel means you will see there is no intermediaries in between here whereby it's directly from producer to the consumers second the retailer channel because in the middle here you will have the retailers then it will help you will buy it from the retailers consumer will buy from the retailers Next is the wholesaler channel, whereby producer will sell to the wholesalers. Wholesalers later on will sell to the retailers. Then only the consumer will buy from the retailers. And lastly, the agent or broker channel, which you will involve agents or broker. 
and then it will sell to the wholesalers which has whereby these wholesalers will sell to the retailers and the retailers will then sell to the consumers other than that many companies also do this multi-channel distribution which some of them will do directly to the consumers okay by using their own websites okay or they have their own catalog typically in the website lah, right and then you have the retailers i think there is a missing arrow here it's supposed to be an arrow here wait let me see okay let me draw okay arrow ignore it being a little bit um, slanting there it's supposed to be straight lah. it's okay so retailers okay uh, so producer might also use distributors or the wholesalers this could be the wholesalers yeah let me get my pointer back all right uh, the producer might use the distributors sometimes distributors are also the wholesalers yeah which there are many of them and then it will go to the dealers dealers are also uh, considered as the wholesalers or retailers or even can be agent or brokers yeah and then it will be to another segment of market okay and they may also have their own sales force to another segments of customers okay so multi-channel distribution are typically used because that producer perhaps have different types of customers so here are the explanations yeah of all the channels just now one channel or the direct channels so you can read through where you know that it is typically from the manufacturer directly to the consumers so most of the time uh, services yeah are using this one channel or the direct channel because you can uh, transfer the services from one uh, party to another party then it only reach the consumer no you will only get the services from the producer or the service provider and then you know the longest or the typical channel found for the consumer product is the agent or broker which they will bring the manufacturers and also wholesalers together for negotiation and then the ownership passes from one or more wholesaler to retailers and finally retailers will sell to the consumers so retailers channel you need to remember retailers channel it is when consumer will buy from retailer okay by wholesaler channel typically the retailer will buy from the wholesaler right now moving on uh, another part of this 7.3 is the channel strategy decision so there are two things that you need to know here first one factors affecting the channel choice and also the level of distribution intensity when you talk about factors affecting channels choice it means that if you are the producer okay you need to decide whether you want to use a direct channel or you want to use the retailer channel wholesaler channel or the agent or broker channel so the factors that affect this particular uh, decision is based on the market factors product factors and also producer factors so let's look at these three factors first when talking about the market factors that affect the channel choices you are looking at your customers yeah remember market these are people first you may want to look at the customer profiles whether the customer are actually a consumer or is it an industrial customers or business customers you may want to look also in terms of their size how big are they or uh, how small are they and their geographic location whether they are scattered around or they are actually focused or concentrated on certain areas so if the size is large typically you will use longer channel okay and if there are scattered many places also you will use many channel members uh, consumers or industrial customers if you are selling to the consumers basically you might use the retailer channels yeah but when you use this uh, when you look at your customer and most of them are the business customers or industrial customers so you might need to use agents or brokers right next product factors okay that affect the channel choices the product itself will affect whether you want to use a longer channel or shorter channels right looking at the complexity of the product if the product is complicated you might require your own sales force to explain to the customers about the product therefore you will need shorter channel when you talk about product prices 
more expensive product will normally be shorter channels because it's more expensive but the cheap products will typically use a longer channel and you also want to look at the stages of the product life cycle remember we learned this in chapter six all right so if it's at the introduction typically you will have shorter channel because it's just an introduction at the sales introduction sorry sales uh, at the sales stage perhaps you will have many distribution channels so you will use longer channels right and when you talk about product delicacy this is how perishable is the product does the product last very long okay like when you talk about fish vegetables all right uh, the, the kitchen uh, uh, what they call it for you to cook in the kitchen yeah things that are delicate so typically it will be shorter channel because you can't afford to have a longer channel so that uh, you make sure that the product that you sell are fresh and also eatable by the consumer when you reach them and lastly the producers factors producer factors also includes the producers resources whether they have a sufficient size of managerial they have financially uh, stable and also a lot of money so that they can actually sell by themselves or not and also their marketing resources Next, they may want to look at also number of product lines that they have. If they only have one and they want to open one shop, it might not be uh, viable or it's not worth for them to open up one shop just to sell one product. Okay, so maybe they will use a lot of marketing intermediaries to sell it. But if they have a lot of product lines, then they might afford to open up their own shops to sell all the products that they have and also the desire for the channel control this includes control over the price the positioning brand image and also the customer supports so that is when you want to control about the price because the moment you use a longer channel you will lose the pricing control over your product because at the end you do not know how much will the uh, retailer charge to your customers okay and you also want to look in terms of whether you want to positioning it rightly and having the brand image okay so uh, a good example is like when uh, apple iphones yeah they don't simply uh, apple not only just iphone but apple products they don't sell at any uh retailers okay they have their own uh, trusted or authorized uh sellers of iphones right where typically it is just at their own uh shop which is the switch yeah or you can get it at the authorized sellers like uh, the telcos and also uh an established retailers like harvey norman and also thank you last part of this chapter is the level of distribution intensity this is related to uh, the number of intermediaries okay and also the number of outlets that they have if it is few that means we call it the exclusive distribution if there are many number of outlets and many intermediaries we call it intensive distribution and if it's in the middle right we call it selective distribution intensity so this is the explanation of intensive distribution where it aims at having a product available in every outlet from the word intensive yeah so there are many distribution right where the target consumer will want to buy it everywhere and typically it is like a convenient products okay um, there are low value frequently purchased products that may require long channel of distribution and they are also cheap okay yellow low value right next secondly the selective distribution not too many and not too little yeah so selective distribution is distribution achieved by screening dealers to eliminate all but a few in any single area and the strategy often hinge on a manufacturer's desire to maintain the superior product image to be able to charge at a premium price typically shopping goods are using this selective distribution strategy and some specialty goods as well this includes like when you want to buy the electronical appliances okay or even your um, things like your uh, shoes your 
uh, what they call it, your handbags, okay? It is at, uh, typically we see shopping products or shopping goods have this selective distribution. And lastly, exclusive distribution which is the most restrictive form of distribution and entails establishing one or a few dealer within a given area. Consumer specialty goods, a few shopping goods and major industrial equipment uh, typically use this exclusive distribution. This limited distribution will aid in establishing a prestige image of the exclusiveness for the product. For example, you know, like, uh, you know, specialty goods, right? Okay, like Louis Vuitton handbag. So it is exclusively only at that particular dealer's shop, all right? Now, um, you can see also Rolex watch, okay? And many industrial equipments using this exclusive distribution whereby typically the distributors or the dealers are actually from the manufacturers itself, okay? And lastly, this is when you can see the differences, yeah? I have summarized for you the intensive level, selective level, and exclusive level with their objective and number of intermediaries. Please, um, I think this is actually very, um, what do you call it, straightforward and easier for you to remember in terms of the strategies that can be done, all right? So with that, we finish chapter seven. So I hope you have watched this particular video and get ready for our uh, live session later on. Okay. Thank you guys. Bye.